if you want to have an asset that no one can take away from you which is very important from people at least in my part of the world that when there are things that are not so secure mm -hmm. at least you have something that you can take with you that no one can take away from you no matter what happens that you can right. send at lightning fast speed so it's right. digitization of property it's your chance to actually own something no one can take away that has the ability also to appreciate because it's scarce Hey guys, we're still here in El Poblino in Barcelona and we have Dragos, real estate guy expert, the guy you should look for if you're into real estate. But we're gonna flip the switch right now. He's gonna ask me questions. This is not scripted. I actually just shocked him that we we're gonna do this video. Take it away, Dragos. Right, tell us Marvin a bit about, say I have no idea about crypto whatsoever. How should I start? And most importantly, I guess, why should I start investing mm. in crypto? As much as I like crypto, I don't think it's for everyone also because it has a sense of number one volatility not a lot of people understand it yet but also since not a lot of people understand it yet that's where all of the opportunity lies because when everyone understands it also then the upside becomes also lesser yeah, so, similar yeah. to property when Definitely. it's fully developed there's no risk you already see how the city would look like then the upside is lesser so for crypto when a lot of people don't understand it that's where the upside is actually at least from my perspective so i'll narrow it down so you have bitcoin and then you have everything yeah. else bitcoin are for people who want freedom because bitcoin is the most decentralized most secure type of asset i don't even see bitcoin as a currency i think the, the misconception of people is they see bitcoin as a replacement for the dollar but i see bitcoin as a digital asset that's decentralized that you won't really use it for transactions mm -hmm. but it's called something similar to digital gold and our most favorite part what's it <laughs> virgin <laughs> <Pinata. Hola. laughs> so bitcoin is a digital asset that yeah. allows you to store your wealth it's called digital gold because all of the things that gold can do it can do as well but a so, hundred times so better would you buy crypto instead of buying gold at this point in your strategy or okay so i do have gold but right. I do have more crypto right now than gold right. for a couple of reasons. If you own gold and you want to transport it, it's such a hassle. It's difficult. You'll need a lot of security to be able yeah. to do it or you can't even bring it cross-border. Unlike yeah. Bitcoin, you can send Bitcoin to anyone in the world yeah. at 11 p.m. on a Saturday when banks are closed, when remittances yeah. are closed as well. You can do a lot of things. In the whole cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin doesn't do much. That's why it's like gold because you can't do anything on top of it. But right. its scarcity alone is what gives it value. And at least for people... Right, because it's finite, right? So yep, there's yep, a yep. limited number of Bitcoin that's yep. out there. Yep. Right. So that makes it valuable and so on. I guess. Yep. And let me put it from this perspective. People will say that, okay, it's scarce. Why should I buy buy it i place the same argument as people who buy rolexes right are what gives a rolex a value because what you probably bought is something that relatively scarce as well if you want to have an asset that no one can take away from you which is very important from people at least in my part of the world that when there are things that are not so secure mm -hmm. at least you have something that you can take with you that no one can take away from you no matter what happens that you can right. send at lightning fast speed so it's right. digitization of property it's your chance to actually own something no one can take away that has the ability also to appreciate because it's scarce. If it appreciates in the future, from my perspective, it's a bonus. But if Bitcoin stays from where it is right now, it doesn't move at all. The ability to be able to send an asset anywhere in the world at a fast speed is already game-changing. What would you recommend in terms of uh, investment strategy? Like, how do you organize it? Do you have like a set amount of your income that you devote to investing or buying crypto? Okay. Or how do you do that? So when I started crypto, I just used profits from stocks. I didn't really use other income from active sources for it. That's why I had the ability to take on more risk. I was at the concept that if Bitcoin would go to zero, you wouldn't lose anything. And not yeah. just that, when I started out, I was thinking that it's a diversification play. I started with a very, very small percentage in terms of my overall portfolio allocation that if this went to zero, you wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah but if it went back to its all-time high, it would be a significant multiple. So for context, at that time, it was 3,000. Yeah. So I studied Bitcoin that the drops were about 90%. So Bitcoin at that point, its highest was around 21,000. If it dropped 90%, it would be about 2,000. So at 3,000, my downside was about 30 plus percent. But if it went back to its all-time high, yeah. it would have been a seven-time multiple yeah. also. Then so eventually, it, was, it went even, yeah, it was worth even it. higher. So yeah. the reason why I can take on more risk is because I'm not using my savings for it. I'm not using other active sources. So 
mm-hmm. if I were a person that would use portions of my salary, it has to be an amount that I'm okay with. It doesn't have to be right. big, but something that I can at least get my feet wet on and then start accumulating from that part. So what would you say? 5 10% of your salary? If they don't have any other investments, mm-hmm. what I would do is I would still split it. If I have like 10% that I would allocate for my investing, I'd put more stocks first. Then right. I'd also put some in Bitcoin. Then what I do is this. After one year or two years of doing it, then I see that I'm more comfortable in stock. I'd less in my Bitcoin allocation. I'd put more in stocks. If the flip side happened, that I'm more comfortable in Bitcoin, I'd put more in Bitcoin. So initially, you just put in to get your feet wet and see what you're more capable of, what you're more experienced of, and what you're more skilled in, and then you scale it from there. Obviously, you cannot afford to buy Bitcoin, I imagine, but if you're just starting out, which crypto would you recommend to buy and how would you do that? So that's a misconception about Bitcoin. You can actually buy Bitcoin even for $1. Oh, really? But you just get like a fraction of it. Oh, so really? You can do that? You, oh, don't, okay. you don't have to buy the whole Bitcoin. You can buy oh, okay. a fraction of it. So the lowest that I've seen is a dollar, some $10. So it's not something that people have to get a whole Bitcoin for them to actually start. Oh, okay. Uh, to answer your question, which cryptocurrencies I like the most, it's still Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin being a store of value, Ethereum being a decentralized platform where a lot of applications will run. I hope I answered your question. Yes. And it's, yes, it's nice, nice to be questioned by a very rich guy from Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, if you guys just tuned in now, we had a couple of videos. Check it out down below and we'll have more still with Dragos real estate experts here in Barcelona. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for Thanks. indulging me. Also, I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon. God bless you all. Experience. You guys want to go through the city better? Up to you. How about you? Yeah, yeah. Dragos, is the, Dragos is the boss. We follow you, boss. We follow you.